one of the new projects I started this year was this podcast called three questions on educators that inspire. And the reason I started it was I felt that there was just not enough gratitude for all the work that was happening in education. And there was this kind of point that basically there was all these people really appreciating educators. They're so thankful when COVID happened, all that they were doing. And that was about two weeks and then it was over. And then it was really kind of complaining and not by all people, but a lot of loud ones. And that's something I noticed. And so I wanted to start this podcast um, just kind of to remind us like about the teachers of our past that have made an impact, but also to help people think about like, what will they be remembered for, you know, years in the future. And so what I'm going to do this month is I'm just going to share um, highlights from each one of these questions. So in today's podcast, we're just going to talk about, uh, you're going to hear people answering the question, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? And I really loved asking this question because I got so many variations, but you'll see that there's a connection uh, in all the stories on the relationships and really how those teachers helped the, the kids that they worked with, not only to be better when they were in their classroom, but better later on their lives. And that's something I really think is important to remember is that your legacy as an educator, as a teacher lives long past uh, the time of any child in your classroom. And that's why I wanted to just kind of compile these, just kind of give you some of those feel good stories um, from people I, you know, actually interviewed on this podcast. So I hope you enjoy this compilation of people answering the question, Who's a teacher that inspired you and why? I really loved asking it. I loved hearing what people shared. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. My first grade teacher, Mrs. Duffy, she was simply amazing. Um, when I was in first grade, I had a speech impediment where I kind of stuttered a bit. But she demonstrated patience with me every step of the way. Uh, she also saw my true potential of what I could become. And when I saw that, what I mean by true potential, she gave me opportunity. Uh, uh, things that I didn't understand, I remember her giving me opportunities to go back and correct. And she showed, demonstrated a level of warmthness that uh, made me really fall in love with learning. Yeah. And that's like, that's amazing. Like, I think a lot of times, uh, we don't talk enough about how important it is to be patient. Cause I'm sure that a lot of teachers that are listening to this, if you really think back at your career, some of the biggest successes that you've actually had are with, you know, kids that really struggle when they first met you. Right. And it was that mm -hmm, perseverance, absolutely. it was that patience, uh, to kind of go through that. And then, you know, how exciting is that to be able to see you know the impact of the work that you do so is mrs duffy uh do you still have contact with her um this is grade one right Debbie, when's the last yeah first time? grade yeah no it's been year uh, i haven't had any uh contact with her i just know that the imprint that she left on me was was phenomenal and i every t every time i get asked that question she's always the first person who pops up who, who comes to mind who's truly been uh, life changing in my life, transformation in my life. Well, you know what, Mrs. Duffy gets the special, if you're listening, you get the shout out horn. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Let's start off first question, right? And I know this one, I'm ready for this one because last time when we hit it, I was not ready for it. Uh, so it is a very powerful answer. And uh, can you talk about a teacher that inspired you and why? Yes. So I would like to talk about my first grade teacher, Mrs. Bogus. Shout out to Mrs. Bogus. Okay, we're doing it early. I'm not doing it after. <laughs> uh, I like so this, this is kind of like the, the old school Will Ferrell kind of like. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I just really okay. felt that. Yeah, um, I like it. So in order to fully. I think feel the impact that Mrs. Bogus had on me. I need to go back and share a little personal story. Uh, so when I was in kindergarten, actually, my dad was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia and um, he battled cancer through uh, the winter into, into the winter of my first grade year. And I can still remember when my mom had to come home and share that just some possibly difficult news with me that he had passed away. 
and I can still picture myself sitting in the bedroom with her. There was a canopy bed and, you know, I had a nice quilt um, on my bed, and brown shag carpet. And I can just see my little self sitting next to her. But I didn't, I remember that, but I don't remember the words, mm -hmm. but she remembers it very vividly. And as she shared this difficult news, um, the way she describes it is that my very small little self like flies off the bed and runs to the window and overcome by um, grief. Um, you know, my face is hot, tears pouring down my face. Like I'm pulling the blinds off of the window. I mean, that's just how much feeling was in my little body. Mm -hmm. Like I was able to pull them off the window and I turned around to face her. And my first question to her out of any, anything, my first question was, are we going to have enough food to eat? Mm -hmm. And that's a really difficult part of the story for me to share, but I, I find it important to share because I think sometimes we get really caught up in talking about, oh, we're preparing these kids for the real world. Mm -hmm. um, that's very real. There's not, doesn't get much more real than that. And so for two weeks, I stayed home with her. Uh, this reality that, you know, a parent could be taken from me forever was very vivid for me. So we clung to each other in this very difficult time, but eventually I had to go back to school. And I remember the day that I had to go back to school was a nerve wracking one. And I was very anxious about going back. And I can picture her little powder blue Toyota Camry driving me around the circle drive to the front of the school. And I turned to, you know, walk out the door and I'm thinking, wow, it's going to take a Goliath level strength to get this door open and step out this door. Mm -hmm. And I look up and my first grade teacher, Mrs. Bogus, had a bunch of my friends from my class waiting for me at the front door, their little faces pressed up against the glass, cheering for me and waiting for me and beckoning me to come in as if they were mm -hmm. rolling out the red carpet for my re-entry into school. And what I love about that story is that she took something that was impossibly difficult um, and she knew exactly what I needed to have the strength to come back. She turned it into a celebration and she created um, a very special moment for me. So, uh, and she really had my back multiple times that school year. And I think that, um, you know, there's lots of little stories of teachers who are doing that every day. They probably, like, she might not even remember that story. Um, but like, I'm almost 40 years old. I'll be 40 in June. Like, and I still like very vividly that Mrs. Bogus story is like a big hallmark story um, for me in my lifetime. There, and you, you know, there's no way she doesn't remember that. I know that too, right? Like, and I think that part of it too is that we go through that as educators, um, you know, with our kids, we go through that process and how uh, just, it's just amazing. I actually like, I'm wearing a hoodie and it has a pocket and I'm like holding my hands. Uh, just, just, just so much feeling in there because like, like you said this beautifully too, this is not just the story of your teacher, but so many teachers that have done this for kids that don't get appreciated, don't, you know, feel that uh, welcome. So I want to give the just amazing, give that for all the teachers that made that impact. And so that, that story, I just, it's so powerful. It, it is, you know, um, something that I think about too. And, and, and the other thing you said too, and I think it's, it's really powerful um, is that notion of like, people talk about like, Hey, we got to make things relevant. And you know, how like, you know, kids are dealing with some pretty real things too. And I think sometimes not acknowledging that, uh, is hurtful to them. And you know, that, that, that's something I, I'm not going to build on it anymore. I just, I think that story is just amazing. And I so appreciate you sharing that. Cause I know it cannot be easy to actually share that. So thanks for being, I know you love, you love you some Brene Brown. So thanks for being vulnerable. Right? I have to tell you, I never had confidence in my math skills. I would get thrown off in a heartbeat. And there was this one math teacher, Mr. Campo, and there's not much that I remember, but I remember him. Mm -hmm. And I remember him always um, instilling in all of the students that he worked with that they can do it. Like it, it didn't matter what the problem was. He took his time to break things down mm -hmm. for you in such a way that you didn't feel stupid. Um, and I felt like all of the teachers prior to that almost acted as if I was supposed to know mm -hmm. what to do. And um, when he came and said, you can, and then I actually started to see that I could, mm -hmm. he, he then instilled in me something that I continue to practice now to this day with the children that I interact with, but more importantly with the staff that I interact with. And that, that like, I, so I, like, I'm going to, I, I'm terrified to even say this. 
that like that feeling with math specifically sometimes i felt like my math teachers just just got math right like it just came easy to them and it and i know that feeling stupid like you kind of feel like how come it's not just easy for me right and there's and then the teachers that like i actually taught math for years and i begged not to teach math because i like I, i barely passed this like why would you put me in this and i found it was actually one of my favorite subjects because i struggled with it and i had an understanding and as someone who like speaks one of the things i work with speakers is saying like hey like the the last thing that you want to do is speak above the crowd because you want people not feeling like i can't do that like i that's not my you know you want to get them to see yourselves in the story right and like is that what your teacher did for you right like got you to see that yes and more so to the point where then i was able and willing Mm -hmm. to challenge that next level. And on the Regents exam, when I actually passed it, because in New York State, you have to, at the end of the course, take this exam, and I passed it. That just took me over the moon. And no one could then take away that feeling of pride that I then had in my own skills and abilities. And he gave that to me. And this, okay, now this is Mr. Campo, is that what you said? Yes. All right, Mr. Campbell, you, shout out. <laughs> That's like my favorite. That's like my favorite. And I got the great opportunity at a very formative point in my life to work for three summers for John Wooden at the John Wooden basketball camps in Thousand Oaks, California. And so I got a chance to be to work under one of the greatest teachers of all time, greatest coaches of all time, John Wooden. And it was his definition of success, which is that he said that success is the peace of mind you get for doing the best that you can to become the best person that you're capable of becoming, that that is how you define success. And it's not in the win-loss column. It's not in any of those things that people typically point to as a definition of success. It's that you did the best of fulfilling your potential as a human being. And so I think that was something that was very influential for me as I was coming out of high school. Yeah. That's- as a basketball fan uh because we talked about this before and i was like john wooden like you actually know john wooden so that was incredible and you know i'm a huge lakers fan i know that you're you are lakers fan too and kareem abdul jabbar um there's that picture of luos uh kareem abdul jabbar with john wooden uh when they played together and then as older so that's a that's a pretty awesome answer. So I've, I've had a really tricky relationship with teachers because I actually had a teacher when I was in elementary school pretty much say that I wouldn't amount to anything. <laughs> and um, because English was my second language and they thought I had lots of different issues anyway. And my parents didn't speak English, so they couldn't even talk to them. So it wasn't until grade 11 that I really met a teacher that believed in me, that inspired me. Um, his name is Jim Stewart. He retired, so we're Facebook friends. Um, and I think what was so significant about his impact is here's a, a you know a young Italian girl who has a really strict curfew, and he opened up the world of books to me. Mm-hmm. And that in and of itself was incredible. I was able to escape my reality and read these books. Um, but also he was passionate about his subject and encouraging. Like his feedback was always so good. He was continuing to be a mentor to me. Like I followed him around like mm-hmm. a little puppy dog to different uh, different schools. And so I think those were the two qualities. He was passionate about his subject, but he was also very supportive and encouraging and opened up, opened up a world to me I never thought existed. I never thought of even being a teacher before I mm-hmm. met him. And so the end of grade 11, I'm like, I think I want to do this. I want to be a teacher. When's the last time you talked to him? Um, probably last summer. Oh, really? You still connect with him? Yeah, yeah, we're still on Facebook quite a bit. That's pretty cool. I actually, like, I posted a picture of myself, like, kind of my health journey today. My kindergarten teacher actually responded to it, which was so cool, right? So oh, still, still cheering me on. Mrs. Stock, shout out Mrs. Stock and Mr. Stewart. <laughs> so they, uh, when you think of, like, a teacher who inspired you, uh, like, who's one of the first people that comes to your mind? And I know you told me before you're going to have trouble picking because there's so many. Um, but, like, who's one that, you know, inspired you and why? I have to say Miss Bitters. So she was my crew teacher at Docky, at Docky Pot Project-Based Learning High School. We're different now. But um, she was my crew teacher my first year there. And then we really didn't have a relationship in the beginning because I just only seen her for 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. and I knew who she was and I knew like she had an effect on students 
and I always heard our name buzzing around the school, but I never really thought to reach out and try to build my own connection. But my second year during the pandemic, I had her every day, mm-hmm. like three times a day, I think, because I was taking a lot of English credits because I finished everything else. So I was just stacking up on English credits. And um, she she honestly changed my life. She gave me a new perspective on who I was as a person, as well as my ability. She helped me believe in myself because I, I came back to a to a crossroads. Like I was I was down and then I, I got that confidence back mm-hmm. within my ability and then I was down again. I wanna credit that to the pandemic, sadly, but mm-hmm. having her there and throughout that time was amazing because she just pushed me every day. She it wasn't even like she was a teacher, it was more like she was like a mentor and she knew I had the ability when it came to my school elastic, you know, things I had to do, whether it's classwork, homework projects, or, mm-hmm. you know, speaking on behalf of my school, it was, it was honestly like, she tended to the things that I really wanted to work on to push me to be better in life. She, she allowed me to be free in my academics because she understood my ability. And that's one of the, that's one of the things that I, I love her dearly for because I've had a lot of teachers where um, when I feel like, and I know that I'm two weeks ahead and they want me to work two weeks behind. And it's like, that never worked for me. And it always, it always made me fail and perform worse than I actually would be performing if I was allowed to work at my pace. So her giving me freedom within the classroom and and tending to my to my life outside of school really really changed my life. So she's definitely the one I have to speak of for sure. And and that when you when you're talking about that, I think like and this is one of the reasons I was so excited to have you is you know talking about a student because a lot of times we as educators say like oh relationships are so important. And I've, yeah. I've actually had some pushback saying like, oh no, it's like, it's all about academics and things like that. I'm like, it's not, we're not ignoring academics. It's just, you have to start with that relationship and it obviously pushed you to be so much better. So what, sorry, what was the teacher's name? Bitters, Kaylee Bitters. Okay, I actually think, I actually know Kaylee Bitters. I actually yeah. know, I'm She's pretty nice. sure I know that name. So we're going to do this. Shout out Kaylee Bitters. Shout out Kaylee. Yeah. All right. So I would go with my first grade teacher. Her name is Mrs. Houston. Um, elementary school, and I don't know that I could even specify what she did during my year, but I will never forget that several years later, my little brother had her as well, and she came to one of his flag football games on the weekend, and at some point, he broke away, ran for a touchdown, and she ran the entire field with him, just cheering and screaming, tripped in a hole, broke or sprained, did something (laughs) to her ankle where she had to like be on crutches moving forward. Um, But she didn't even care. She was so excited because he'd scored a touchdown. And I just remember thinking, that's the kind of teacher I want to be like all in yelling so loud and crazy on a weekend cheering for not only a current student, but a former student sibling. And it was just, I I will never, ever forget Mrs. Houston doing that. I I recently found her on Facebook. And so that's been really fun to, to reconnect and I don't know that she she remembered once I told her the story because I guess you remember when you break bones. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it kind of sticks with you. <laughs> she is still in education, and so that was a really fun connection to to make sure she knew that how how highly I thought of her because of that. You know, you know, like I, I love about that is. Like I used to go to my kids, and it's you know obviously this is different in Texas. Like I used to go to my kids' students' uh, hockey games, right? And I used to go to their hockey games and cheer them on. It was like made such a big deal, but I didn't do it to like, it's like not a fake thing, right? I didn't just go because, you know, as a teacher, but you do it because you're genuinely invested and you want these kids to do well. And it's just such an awesome, um, you know, example of like how much teachers get into this work to make that difference. So shout out Mrs. Houston. Hands down, the best teacher I have ever had was Mrs. Paula Kraus, who I had my senior year of high school. And the reason that I put her above all the other really great teachers I had is because she saw something in me that no one else did. And so in school, I was like a decent student, like kind of like C's get degrees type pathway. So, um, you know, I was well behaved. 
and I turned in my work, but I never did really anything more than that. And so I was pretty much like a solid C plus, B minus student. And as a result, I was never in any higher level classes. Um, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, it was like very much the time of tracking. And I was always in like the lowest level. And um, that was until I ended up in Mrs. Krause's class my senior year. And she asked us just to draft a college essay. And she's like, you know, maybe college isn't in your plans, but I don't ever want you to regret like not knowing the process and knowing that it was an option for you to apply. So like write an essay and then I'll help you. So I wrote this essay and uh, she held me after class. And I was like, why am I getting held after class? And she's like, oh my gosh, that essay was just so great. And you're just so capable. And I just, I can't allow you to waste like clearly all the potential that you have. And so I've actually called your parents and I made sure that you're gonna be in the honors class. And I was like, oh mm, no, like you clearly have the wrong person. Um, I'm not an honors student. Like I am like a CP2 like kind of gal. She's like, no, like you have so much potential. I can tell it in your writing. And she's like, don't worry about it. Like, I'm happy to spend lunch with you. Like my room is always open for extra help. Like you can do this work. And like something clicked where as soon as I got into this class with all these people who like really cared about the work and, and had these really amazing discussions, I was like, I'm totally capable of this. Um, and it changed kind of the trajectory of everything that I did afterwards. Um, I actually got waitlisted to University of New Hampshire. I didn't get into a state school um, until afterwards. And so I went to UNH, I was like, hands down, like I can do this, like I'm capable. I graduated in three and a half years, got my master's, got my doctorate. And, um, you know, later in life, I was just thinking about like, what if I never had her? Like what would have mm -hmm. happened? And so when I wrote um, UDL Now and we did the second edition, I actually dedicated it to Mrs. Krause and tried to track her down because I really wanted to take her out to dinner. So we're out to dinner and I give her the book and I'm like, oh, Mrs. Krause, like you have no idea how much you changed my life. And she's like, really, what did I do? And I'm like, oh, Mrs. Krause, <laughs> I wrote this That's college amazing. essay. And she's like, I actually remember that college essay. Like I remember what you wrote it about. And I'm like, and then you put me in honors. And she's like, I don't remember that part. Like, what are you talking about? You don't remember that part. She's like, I put you in honors. I'm like, yes. Like it was one of the biggest pivotal moments of my entire life. Like you said I was capable and you put me in honors. She's like, oh, Katie, I thought everybody was an honors student. And one of the things that I was like really passionate about was like basically sharing with administration, anyone who you believe in can work at really high levels. And so every year I would like advocate for more and more students to take honors. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> right. But that's the teacher that I want to be. Is she truly believed that everybody could do amazing work and they did. And so I've always kind of kept her in my mind as somebody I wanted to be like in my career.